Hey everyone, welcome back. So this is one of the rare, rare videos on this channel where we talk about a deterministic algorithm method. Um, so this channel is called Rhythmic Math, but we all know that we talk about data science, stochastic, random, statistical stuff a lot more, but this one was just too important to me to pass up. Um, this one actually comes with kind of a side story. So I was looking through some of the original code on my GitHub from many years ago, back when I was an undergrad, and I stumbled across the first, I guess, big piece of code I'd written to actually solve a real world problem. And oh man, it was disgusting. There was just like double for loops everywhere. There was no vectorization. It was a little bit cringy to read, but you got to start somewhere, right? Um, and this, this piece of code, a little bit of background. So I was on a staff of people at the time and we had to schedule shifts. And so people would submit their preferences for which shift they wanted. And then the traditional way to do it was that a group of us would get together in a room and we would look through all these preferences and try to build a schedule that made everyone happy. And it would take like three or four hours, sometimes more. There had to be a better way, right? Like I didn't know that much about math really, but I had just taken an optimization course. So there had to be a way to tell the computer about these preferences and have it figure it out in like a couple of seconds maximum. And this is where this video came from. So officially I'm calling this video shift scheduling for you mathematical people. This is really about something called linear programming. Uh, which is a optimization framework, but um, we won't be diving too much into how that works. It'll be more about how do you solve this really hard looking problem? And I kind of break it down to something that actually makes sense. So let's dive right into it. I'll be showing you a toy version of the problem that I actually had to solve, um, but the same concepts will apply. So let's say that you're the manager of some kind of, I don't know, car rental agency, and you have five employees. You have Anakin, Bucky, Carlos, Dobby, and Elmo and you have seven days of work you need to schedule Monday through Sunday of some given week. And so that's the first part of the story. Now come all of the constraints, because obviously you can't just schedule people whenever, you can't have one person working every day. So here's all the rules you need to follow, or in the mathematical terminology, the constraints you have to obey. So first of all, there's two shifts every single day. So every single one of these seven days, there's two shifts or 14 shifts total. So we need to schedule two distinct people on every single one of these days. Now, furthermore, we want to make sure that nobody gets burned out. Nobody has a lot more work than anyone else. So if we take 14 total shifts and divide that by five employees, it doesn't divide evenly, but we get something between two and three. So we're going to enforce that the number of shifts each person works is either two or three to make sure no one feels they're getting taken advantage of. It's not unfair. And now we also need to make sure that we respect our employees' time off. They can't just work every single day. So we ask them to fill out a form and tell us two things, the days they cannot work and the days they would prefer to work if possible. And that data is collected here. So it's mostly empty, but all the X's are indications of, for example, Anakin cannot work Monday or Tuesday. Uh, so that's what that means. And the checks are saying that I would like to work that day if possible. So for example, Bucky would like to work on Friday because Bucky has no life, me too. So uh, now we have all of these constraints here and we want to basically form a schedule that is going to obey these constraints and hopefully also schedule as many people on these check marks as possible. This seems impossible or really hard. Um, it did for me, which is why we were doing it the old way of people sitting in a room and kind of just fudging a schedule together last minute. Um, but if we make one key translation, if we define a set of variables, we see this all kind of flows very beautifully and naturally. And those variables actually are just simple binary variables. So our story starts here. We're going to define a bunch of these variables, binary variables, called p underscore id. And these variables are one, if person i works on day d, that should be a little d here, so this should be a lowercase d. So if person i is going to be scheduled to work on day d, then this variable becomes one, otherwise it's not. And it turns out by just reframing this problem in terms of these variables, which you can collect in a matrix that looks like this. So how many of these variables are there total? There are as many variables as there are unique combinations of employee and day. So in our case, five times seven or 35 distinct binary variables. We can frame the entire problem in terms of these 35 binary variables. And so here's how all the constraints we wrote in text translate into math. The first constraint is that we want to have every day covered. So there's two shifts on every single day. And so how do we explain that in terms of these binary variables? It ends up just being looking pretty simple like this. So for every single day from one through seven, 
we want the sum of p underscore id to equal two if we iterate over all employees. And I think it's easiest to understand in terms of this matrix or table over here. So what does this mean? For example, if d is equal to one, then we're looking at just the first column here. So we're saying that if we add up all these binary variables for Monday, they better add up to two. That makes sense because each binary variable for Monday is saying, are you working on Monday? Are you working on Monday? Are you working Monday? And if we add up all the answers to those questions, we should get two, and that would indicate that two people will be working on Monday. Same thing for every other day. So this constraint is enforcing that these column sums all need to be two. So that's taken care of. Now, the next constraint is equal work. We don't want anyone to be working too much more than anyone else. So we said that either you need to work two or three shifts for this to be about equal. And that can also be captured in a very simple constraint. So now if we sum not over the people, but if we sum over the days, so if we sum from d equals one through seven of these PID variables, then they need to be less than or equal to two, greater than or equal to three for every single employee from one to five. And this has a very parallel translation to this table. These are just the row sums. So what does it mean to sum up the row? That means I am looking at a particular employee, for example, Anakin, and by summing up their, are you working Monday? Are you working Tuesday? Are you working so-and-so up until Sunday? That's gonna give me the total number of days they're working that week, which needs to be two or three. That's exactly what constraint says. So that's exactly saying that the row sums need to either be two or three each. So this is really cool. I don't know, I'm just really excited. This, this is a blast from my past. You're probably not as excited as I am, but this is just really cool for me. So let's press on. Uh, the constraint three is the easiest one, so time off. These are just really easy constraints. We look at each of these X's, and we just enforce that for every single combination of person and day, where that person has scheduled that day off, we enforce that has to be equal to zero, which means that, hey, they're not working that day. End of story. And that's it, that's all of our constraints, and now we're ready to formulate the linear program. Actually, before I do that, the reason this is called linear program, to dive into the math just for a second, is because if you can devise all your constraints as linear combinations of your variables, and you can devise your objective function, the thing you're trying to minimize or maximize, given those constraints also as a linear combination of your variables, you're in good shape, you can use this method, there's many libraries for code, which we'll look at in just a second, to solve this very efficiently. And look at all our constraints, they are linear combinations. Actually, they're simpler, they're just basically sums, which are linear combinations of our binary variables. So we're in good shape. And so what is our objective function here? That is where the last piece of the puzzle comes in, where we asked, hey, do you wanna work that day? Do you wanna work this day? So we take their preferences and we sum up all their preferences. So basically, if there's a check mark on a given combination of person and day, then we would love to match that in our objective function, which is why we would like to maximize the sum over all pairs of preferences for all these variables. And that's gonna be the best schedule, such that all these constraints, I don't know why I have a constraint four, you don't need this guy, such that constraint one, constraint two, and constraint three are met. And how do we actually solve this? Again, not getting too deep into it, but you can look up something called the simplex method, which is designed to solve these linear programs extremely efficiently. So let's hop over the code for the last one or two minutes of this video and show you how quickly this can actually get solved. All right, so now let's finish up today just looking at some code for a minute or two. This code is really easy to read. Um, I put some comments here and there, but with this main library we're gonna use, which is called Pulp, which I think stands for Python Utility for Linear Programming. So it was literally built for this task. This makes it really easy to read, really easy to understand what's going on. But I have put all the same mathematical equations uh, in this notebook so you can match it up with the whiteboard. So we have these binary variables. We have the first constraint, which is to make sure that enough people are working every single day. And you can see this pulp code reads just like English. So basically prob is the linear programming problem. You'll see the driver code at the bottom, but this is basically just the object which we're gonna be using to solve this linear program. And you can just add constraints with this very nice plus equals notation. So they've overloaded this notation for your convenience. And so we're just saying this problem plus equals the following constraint and this constraint ensures that every day there's enough people working. In this case, it's two people. This other constraint, make sure that work is distributed evenly, so make sure that the number of days any person works is greater than some lower bound and less than some upper bound. You see the same constraints here. So we have the upper bound constraint and we have the lower bound constraint. And then finally, we have the constraint where you're gonna make sure to not schedule people on days they want off, and the same exact code here. So this code is pretty standard, easy to read. 
And then we have the objective function, which is basically just adding up all of the preferences, and then we're putting that in our linear programming object here. So basically it's going to try to maximize the number of matches of preferences that people said while obeying all the following constraints that we just saw before. And so here's the driver code. We see that we add the number of matching shifts objective function. We add the enough workers constraint, the equal work constraint, the time off constraint, and then solving it is just as easy as saying problem.solve. So it just reads really nicely. And then we print out a bunch of stuff. So I mostly just want to walk you through a couple of examples of this to show you just how powerful it is. So let me run this from the beginning because this notebook might be a little stale. So running all this. So we're going to start with a very basic case, the same case we saw on the whiteboard. We have seven days to schedule and we have five employees, two shifts per day, and a couple of time off requests, a couple of shift preferences here. We go ahead and try to solve the problem. We get a success within 87 milliseconds. Okay, let that sink in. This problem, which might have taken us like five minutes to work out by ourselves, and even then we might not have got an optimal solution, takes 87 milliseconds to successfully solve using this library. And so we can see the schedule here. I've outputted it as this kind of black and white grid where black means the person's not working that day and white means they are. We can just do a couple of spot checks. Is there two people working every single day? So one, two, yep, good for Monday, good for Tuesday. So yeah, there's two people working every single day. And then how many shifts does each person have total? The first person has three, 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 two, and three. So the equal work is met. And if you go through all of these uh, cannot work on certain days, you'll see those are all met as well. Super cool, but let's scale it up. So we're gonna do a harder case. Now there's 21 days to schedule, 10 employees, and four shifts per day. And these next two for loops are basically just simulating some days off and some preferences randomly. So we see there's quite a few of these time off requests to respect, and there's a quite a few shift preferences to work through. But we see that within 108 milliseconds, this is way less than a second still, we get this full schedule, boom. And by the way, it shows you how many of the preferences were matched. In the previous one, we got all the preferences, all five out of five. Here we got the same exact thing, nine out of nine preferences matched. Two for two. In the schedule, you can check that it's same, but it's amazing that we're able to get this within less than a second. And now let's do the boss level. So boss level is you're trying to schedule 180 days, six whole months of work all at once. You have 50 employees, so this is kind of a bigger company now and you have 15 shifts per day. Seems like it could take a really long time, definitely not something you can do by hand within any reasonable amount of time and get it to be fully optimal. But let Pulp handle it, and you see that it takes 1.68 seconds to get you this schedule. Obviously, we're not gonna zoom in, but you can see all 180 days, all 50 employees got scheduled. So hopefully you're convinced on the power of this linear programming technique. I'll make this code available to you. If you learned something, please, please like and subscribe. It really, really supports the channel, helps to get exposure and so on. So I will see you next time.